Hello and welcome to the Phone Burner demo today. I am your host, Jeff Osnes. I appreciate you taking the time today to join us for the Phone Burner demo. And I'm looking forward to walking you through the system and helping you see how this is set up. So uh, what you're looking at right now is the, uh, is the Welcome tab. In today's demo, I'm going to show you how to really kind of get the basics set up and, and use the basics of setting up and using the dialer. Uh, so we're really going to cover step one, recording a voicemail. Now the voicemail that we record is an outgoing message that you'll leave on somebody's answering machine if they don't answer the phone live. After we record a voicemail, then we're going to do a test dial session. We're going to talk about the contact manager, and then we're going to do a test dial session so you can really see how to move from call to call within PhoneBurner. Now there's a lot to PhoneBurner, but that is really what PhoneBurner is at its heart and soul is is, is helping you automate the voicemails and doing your dial sessions. So that's what we're going to focus on in this demo today. So the first thing we're going to do is record a voicemail. We can either click here on step one, or we're going to, we can go to dial sessions, phone burner settings, and then voicemail library. Once we he get here to the voicemail library, we're going to see a list of any voicemails that we've pre-recorded or, or that you've recorded in the past. Now if it's the first time you've come here, then you're not going to see that. You're only going to see the Create a Voicemail section. The Create a Voicemail section will give you the option to get a voicemail into the system. You can either upload an audio file as an MP3 into the system, or you can dial in. You can dial into the system and, and use the PIN. And we're going to actually dial in to record a voicemail, so bear with me while I do that. So I'm dialing that number, and then I'm going to enter the PIN. Thank you for calling Audio Creator to record your messages. Please enter your personal identification number. Please wait while I look up your account. Thank you. After the beep, begin speaking. When you're done recording, please press the pound key. Hey, this is Jeff with Phone Burner. Hope you're having a great day. Just wanted to follow up with you. It's been a, been a couple months since you've been using Phone Burner, and I just want to see how things are going with you. See, see if you've experienced uh, three to four times as many dials per hour now that you and your agents are using Phone Burner. Love to chat with you just to kind of touch base and see if there's anything I can do to help you and your team out. So anyway, give me a call back when you have a chance, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. To save this message, press Please wait while I save your recording. I have finished recording your message. Goodbye. Okay, so now we've recorded a voicemail. That's just an example of a voicemail that I might record if I was, if I was doing some follow-up calls. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the voicemail library page. We'll see the new voicemail now shows up here. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, two to three month follow up two because I had one before and I'll save that. And now I could also delete this other one if I wanted to. I can also rearrange my, my uh, voicemails if I want to move this one up. So you can reorder your voicemail. But once you've got your voicemail recorded and, and, uh, and you're happy with what you've got there, then you just go over to Contacts. And the Contact Manager is where you're going to organize your contacts. This is where you go. You can either add contacts individually or you can import contacts, which is what most people will do. You just need a CSV file. You take that CSV file and you follow the steps through the import process, and that will get those contacts added to your account. Uh, in your account, you've got the basic contacts folder. That's going to be in there by default. Um, but if you want to create additional folders, by all means, go here and click the Create button and create as many folders as you'd like. Uh, you can also go in and manage those folders to reorganize them. So you can see here I added an interested folder, and I made that folder a subfolder under the contacts folder. And I did that by creating a folder and then managing the folders. Uh, in my uh, contacts folder, I've got my two sample contacts. And when you created your account, the system uh, gave you two sample contacts, Sally Prospect and Jeff Sample. You're welcome to call those contacts as often as you need to to, um, 
to get familiar with the system. That's what they're there for. They don't actually ring through to somebody's phone, so you're not going to bother anybody when you call those. Um, and these are the two sample contacts that we're going to use for doing our dial today. So I'm going to go ahead and select these contacts. Once you've got the contacts on the screen that you want to start calling, you just select them and press the Begin Dial Session button. That's going to bring up what is called the Dial Session window. Here we've got a couple of setup steps. Uh, we need to choose if we want to have a phone script up on the screen. Now because this is a demo, I want to show you what the script looks like on the screen. So I'm going to select the follow-up script that we have pre-created in the system for you. The other thing is the voicemail message. Um, this is where you get to choose which voicemail you're going to use. You can see my two to three month follow-up number two is pre-selected and ready for me to use. Um, if I wanted to switch it, I could switch it to a different one for this session. And then finally, we've got our disposition set. The disposition set is the group of buttons that we're going to see on the screen after we complete a call so that we can set the status of that call. You can create custom buttons. And if you had created custom buttons in a custom disposition set, you'd be able to choose it at this point. But this is a demo. We're just going to use the default disposition set. And for most people, that's a good starting point. So I'm going to just leave that selected, and I'm going to continue. Once I continue, the next screen is going to show me a phone number and a PIN. I just need to use my phone to dial that number and enter the PIN. One of the great things about Phone Burner is it does not require any special equipment. It doesn't require any special headsets. You just keep using the computer you're used to and the phone you're used to, and at the start of each session, you're just going to connect the two by making this phone call and entering the PIN. And so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go ahead and dial this number and enter the PIN. Once I get connected, you'll hear me enter that PIN. Please enter your personal identification number. Please wait while I look up your account. Thank you. Once you click the Start button on your screen, your dial session will begin. All right, so now I'm connected. I've got my two sample contacts queued up to be called. And I could start dialing if I wanted to. I'm going to wait just a second because I want to talk to you about caller ID. The way caller ID works in PhoneBurner is by default we take the caller ID from your phone that you use to call into the system, and we rebroadcast that caller ID. You'll see that mine is currently showing as restricted, and that's because the phone I use to call into the system is not displaying a caller ID to PhoneBurner. So PhoneBurner then in turn does not have a caller ID to display to my contacts. Now, if I wanted to display a caller ID, even if I'm not calling from that phone, that phone number, I can, I'm going to move this off the screen now. So I'm moving my dial session window off the screen, and I'm going to go to Dial Sessions, and I'm going to go to Phone Burner Settings, and I'm going to go to Caller ID. On the Caller ID Setup page, I can actually enter a 10-digit phone number that Phone Burner would then display to my contacts as I'm making calls even if I'm not calling from that phone number. So keep that in mind. You can set the caller ID on your account to whatever you want it to be set to. I'm going to come back to the dial session window here. And I'm going to make the window just a little bit larger. And then I'm going to hit Start Dialing. Once I hit Start Dialing, it's going to queue up my first contact. And I see all of my previous notes. I see all of the information. All this information hey, is here. Sally Prospect here. Thanks. Now, if I get a voicemail, I don't have to listen to the entire greeting. I just click that Leave Voicemail button as soon as I know it's a voicemail. And now we're off to the next call. So it's now calling Jeff Sample, which is our second contact. And we're going to leave it a message with Sally. Hi. Don't click the Leave Voicemail button just yet. This is Jeff, the customer advocate at Phone Burner. And I want to show you around. All right, so I didn't want to try to talk over myself there. So, uh, but in a live answer situation, when somebody answers the phone live, you click uh, the live answer button. Now, you don't have to click the live answer button in order to have a conversation with the contact. You click the live answer button just so that it gets rid of all the other extra buttons and leaves you with the big red end this call button. When, you, when you're done having your conversation with the prospect, you click on the uh, end this call button, that's what's going to disconnect the call with the contact. You do not want to hang up your phone. If you hang up your phone, the entire session 
this entire session is going to end, and you won't be able to disposition the call. You won't be able to add your notes. So remember, if in a live answer situation, don't forget to click the live answer button and then end the call using the button. Excuse me, end the call using the big red end this call button when you're done talking to them. Now that we've ended the call, we've got all the time we need at this point to add notes. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to add an additional note here to this contact, I can do that now. Great guy wants to buy my product or service. So you just add whatever notes you need to, anything that, uh, that you would consider relevant or necessary to know later on. Above the notes section, you'll see this click to add tags area. You can add tags to your contacts during the dial sessions. You can remove tags from your contacts. Tags come in handy for sorting and organizing and searching through your contacts. Um, I use tags a lot in my in my day to day uh, business because I, I I like to keep track of who I've given demos to, who I've who's upgraded and paid for the system, um, and I use tags for that. Uh, you can also uh, uh, right above that you'll see an email to send drop down. This will show you a list of all of the emails that are in your account that you've got pre-created. We've got several, uh, several emails that we've added to your account that you can use. Uh, obviously, you'll probably want to go in there and edit them to make them more specific to your opportunity or your business. Um, and so you select the email and then you click on the lock here. Now if you don't want to actually select the email every time, if you want it to just go out automatically based off the outcome of the call, you can actually assign the emails to the buttons. When you're editing your buttons, you can go in and, and set a specific email to each button. So one email can send the interested email, and another, or sorry, one button can send the interested email, and another button can send the wrong person email. So you can set up each button to send a different email. Really cool feature. Saves a lot of time. Uh, right up above that, you'll see the option to move a contact from one folder to another. This is another feature or another function that you can assign to the buttons. When you're editing your buttons, you can set it up so that when you click the They Are Interested button, the contacts are automatically moved to the interested folder if you want to do that. Um, above that, you have the option to uh, edit your contact information. Over to the right, you've got your custom field, so you can uh, update or edit those custom fields as you're talking to your contact. A uh, cool thing about website addresses is if it's a full URL, the system will make it a clickable link, and then you click on that, that will take you to their website so you can learn more about their business or whatever it is that they do. Um, the phone script is found under the phone script tab, so if I click on that, we'll see the phone script listed here. You can see it's a dynamic script, meaning it's pulling information from within the contact record into the script. So in this case it says, Hi Jeff, because it's pulling the name of Jeff into the script. And it says this is Mr. Demo because that's the name on this account. So Mr. Demo uh, from PhoneBurner. And then right here you'll notice that it's actually pulling MeetingBurner into the script. That's because MeetingBurner is the company name. And I used, when I updated this script, I actually used the personalization code to add the contact's company name into the script. So you can really set up your scripts to pull data from, with, from within the contact record. So all you really have to do is just read through the script. You don't have to go back and forth between the different, uh, different fields. And then finally, before we move on here, under the, this, uh, this little menu right here, this Actions menu, when you click on that, you'll see uh, a few different options. But one that I want to point out is the Schedule Follow-up. That will bring up your phone burner calendar where you can add an event, you know, follow up an appointment with the contact, and it will be associated with that contact, meaning you can click on this little link here and go straight to that contact's details. Um, you can also set up a reminder. Once you save the, uh, the appointment, you can then go ahead and export that to Outlook or iCalendar or Google Calendar so that you don't have to really maintain do two different calendars. And one little thing I do want to point out is we have Google syncing coming in the very near future where you'll actually be able to sync between your Google Calendar and your phone burner calendar so they'll just stay up to date together. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete this event because I don't want to be reminded to call Jeff Sample tomorrow. And I'm going to close the calendar. And then once I'm done and I'm ready to move on to the next call, 
I click the Disposition button down at the bottom. And once again, these buttons are fully customizable. So if you want to create a custom set of buttons, and you want to control what those buttons do, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and mark this contact as interested, and boom, we're off Goodbye. to the next call. Now, that was our last call because we only had two contacts set up, so the session ended. Now we're going to go back to our contacts, and I want to show you what happened here. We go to Contacts. We go to our Contacts folder. We can see our two sample contacts are here. They've both been called today. And this information is now searchable. So if I want to go in here to the Advanced Search, I can search for my contacts based off of the tags that they have associated with them. So I can find everybody that I've given a demo to. Or I can search for my contacts based off the outcome of the call. Maybe I want to find everybody I called and they were marked as interested. I could do that. Um, maybe I want to search for my contacts based off the last time they were called. So I have the option to search based off the last time they were called. Lots of options in here. I can also search for contacts based off the total number of times they've been called. You know, greater than, less than, certain number of times. Um, and then, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And then a couple other things I like to point out here in the uh, demo, upper right hand corner of the contact manager, there's this little gear wheel menu. When you click on that, you'll see a menu with several different options. You'll see a quick link to the emails and phone scripts where you can create your own custom emails and phone scripts. You can also manage tags here. Uh, you can go in and manage your custom fields if you want to create or edit or delete custom fields. You can do that. But one of my favorite ones is the contact manager layouts. This one allows you to change what you actually see when you're looking at a list of contacts. So right now we see their name, we see their phone number, we see their email, we see all this information. But if we wanted to change this, to be something else, we could go in here to our Contact Manager Layouts, and we can create custom layouts. Um, and those layouts can be assigned to different folders. Now before we wrap up this demo, I do want to point out two more things here. The first one is the Support tab. If you click on the Support tab, you'll see that we offer phone support Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Time. You're welcome to call in to support and get help anytime you need to during those hours. Uh, we also have video tutorials listed back here. So if you're looking for some additional help, you can come back in here and watch the video tutorials. And then finally, when you set up your trial account, you were, you were given 60 trial minutes. Uh, once those trial minutes are up, and you'll see, you'll see up at the top of your, your account when you're logged in how many minutes you have left. But once those trial minutes are gone, you'll need to choose an account. We have two account levels with PhoneBurner. We have a 7.5 hour account, which is $67.50 a month. And we have an unlimited account, which is $149 a month. So once you're ready to, or to upgrade to a full-fledged account, make sure you choose which account level you want. Also, I want to point out the unlimited account includes three premier feature, features or premium features. One of those is call recording, the ability to record your live conversations. The other is the ability to use your own email server. So when PhoneBurner sends emails for you, rather than them being sent through the PhoneBurner servers, they can actually go through your mail server, which is a really cool feature. And then finally, it's Smart Sender. That's a feature that goes along with the emailing within the system that allows you to send trackable attachments to your contacts. So you can actually track when those people interact with the documents that you're sending them. You can even, you can even include you can even include a video and track when they start watching the video and if they finish watching the video, and then follow up with those people accordingly. So anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to watch the demo today. I hope this has been helpful in uh, helping you understand the, uh, the benefits of PhoneBurner and how we can help you make three to four times as many calls per hour using the PhoneBurner technology. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and happy dialing.